Anxiety has a huge effect on people's lives. Acute anxiety can make it difficult or impossible to carry out daily tasks. Performance-based anxiety can ruin careers and chronic anxiety has been linked to a vast range of health issues including chronic pain, problems with digestion, circulation, immune system and mental health. In some cases it can even lead to heart attacks and strokes. All of us experience anxiety to a certain extent as it's a natural part of being human. But for huge and growing numbers of us, anxiety is a problem. To successfully beat anxiety, everyone's different and it will take different combinations of different approaches such as meditation, counselling, exercise and improved sleep. The Alexander Technique is a powerful tool for overcoming anxiety and it has a unique approach. So if you're interested in learning how it works, then keep watching. I'm Pete Robinson from movementandposture.com. I'm a qualified Alexander Technique teacher and I'm really pleased to be able to share the benefits that Alexander Technique can bring to your posture, movement, health and performance. I'm releasing new videos every Sunday, so subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell so you don't miss out. In this video, I'll explain in simple terms what anxiety is and how it affects us. I'll then explain how the Alexander Technique can help you to break the cycle of anxiety. By the end of the video, you'll have three practical Alexander Technique methods which you can use to help overcome anxiety. Anxiety is a natural response to danger. If we're walking through the forest and a bear jumps out, our nervous system kicks into overdrive and floods our body with hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol and releases stored energy from our liver and muscles. Our heart rate increases, our muscle tone and posture change. Our body enters fight or flight mode and we have the increased energy to run away or attempt to defend ourselves. This is designed as a temporary boost and we need to return to normal fairly quickly, at which point we'll feel exhausted and shaky, but hopefully we haven't been mauled by the bear. In modern life, hopefully most of us don't need this fight or flight response too frequently, but what we find is that stress can continually trigger it. If our lifestyle means that we are constantly pushing ourselves working long hours or in stressful conditions, or if some aspect of our life situation is uncomfortable, painful or worrying, we find that many of those fight or flight symptoms are always present to some extent and we experience those as anxiety. The problem with symptoms of anxiety is they create a vicious cycle. Here's an example. You're anxious because your job is too demanding, which creates symptoms of anxiety in you. These symptoms then make it harder for you to meet the demands of your job, which of course reinforces the original anxiety. When there is a vicious circle such as this, it's not uncommon for the anxiety to just spiral out of control to the point where you're unable to work or you develop health problems. So that's a very simplistic overview of anxiety. As I said before, there are many approaches to tackling the problem. The Alexander Technique approach is that we work on our habitual reactions to what's going on. Rather than working on the psychological aspect of the condition, we simply attempt to break the cycle by discovering unhelpful habits and stopping them from happening. This usually has the effect of also stopping the feeling of anxiety, but as with much Alexander Technique, we're taking an indirect approach. The postural changes that happen when we are stressed are sometimes called the startle pattern. Our muscles contract and our breathing becomes shallow. We become a, a coiled spring ready to attack or run away. Try it. Imagine the sudden danger, such as that bear I mentioned earlier. Can you mimic what would happen in your body? That's your startle pattern, and it's a reasonable response to a sudden danger. Now imagine that you're working in an office and desperately trying to meet a deadline. Can you feel that the same pattern has been activated? Maybe not with the same strength as before, but all of the compression and tension is still there. This is of course not useful at all. That muscle tension is there to help you run or fight. It's not going to make doing your job any easier. So we're not going to look at what's going on with your psychology or ask why you are responding to the situation in this way. We're simply going to become aware of the reaction, make it stop and then choose a better way of working. Here's a scenario. You habitually rush into work, get to your desk, computer on, get stuck in. The habitual reaction to the situation will be activated and you'll quickly assume that startle pattern. But because it's a habit, you won't even be aware of it. Instead, you'd sit down at your desk, resist the compulsion to get working. You would choose a sitting posture that makes it easier for your body to be in balance, feet flat, torso upright. You'd bring your attention to the whole of yourself, quietly noticing what's going on in the body and mind. You would then make the simple decision to not compress or tighten the body, to allow your breathing to be slow and free. 
to remain in balance on your sitting bones and to not lock into a posture. Just be easy and mobile. By doing this, you've broken that vicious cycle and won a victory over your anxiety. Of course, you can apply this to whatever situation or activity makes you anxious. Sometimes our anxious response to a situation is so strong, it's very difficult to break it when it happens. A way of dealing with this is to visualize that stressful situation whilst using the Alexander Technique to prevent the associated habits from being activated. It's like practicing overcoming the anxiety in a safer environment. This time, instead of sitting, we'll use the constructive rest or semi-supine position. If you don't know how to use this, check out the video linked above and in description first. Lay down in semi-supine position and don't think at all about the stressful situation that we'll be working on. Instead, bring your attention to the whole of yourself. Allow your weight to drop into the support of the floor and notice your breath moving freely. Remain aware of the space around you and just quieten down. When you feel calm and supported, you can begin to visualise whatever you've decided to work on. It could be anything from a social situation to a phobia, a stressful work or personal environment. If you're a performer, it may be walking on stage and starting to perform. The goal is to associate the situation with your decision to remain in the present moment, to let the ground support you, to remain in balance with free movement of breath and to allow your body to expand freely. Really visualise how it would feel to maintain your balanced free state whilst being in the situation that would normally make you anxious. Once you feel as though you're able to do this well, you may find that you're more ready to confront the situation directly using method one. In method one, we looked at increasing awareness of the whole self and making general decisions about balance and tension. When you're in a situation that you find stressful, at the start it can be difficult to keep this level of awareness. So this method will focus on one specific area of the body, your head neck joint. I went into some detail about the head neck joint in previous videos, but to recap, the joint is here, behind the earlobes. Alexander discovered that if this joint was held stiffly, it had a huge knock-on effect on tension in the rest of the body. This means that it can act as a key to breaking the overall pattern associated with stress and anxiety. Try this experiment. Imagine the bear has jumped out at you again and assume the starter position. Now focus on relaxing the muscles around that head neck joint so that it can move freely again. Do you notice that all of the other places that you held tightly also relaxed automatically? So, the way that you use this is that when you are in a situation that is activating your stress response or anxiety, you just bring your attention to the head neck joint and decide to release it so that it's free to move. A really simple, focused thought that you should be able to remember to do with a bit of practice. As you get better at breaking the cycle of stress and tension, you may find that you're able to expand the thinking to include some of the other ideas that we explored in methods one and two. So there you have some Alexander Technique ideas for dealing with anxiety. I'd love to hear whether you find them useful or interesting, so hit the thumbs up or leave a comment so that I know. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions, or if you'd rather message me privately, that's fine too. I'll get straight back to you. As always, remember to subscribe and check out some of the other videos on the channel, and let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Bye for now.